Hello, and welcome back to XP Waste, where we ask the difficult question, like, how can a cloud be venomous, and what does Mauritania smell like? Hi, I'm Oxy. I'm Scape. Who the hell are you? You're not Michael. No, um, I am not. He actually uh, just left his uh, computer on, I just thought I'd come in and have a go. Here I am. Oh, perfect. All right, <laughs> awesome. No joking, I am filling in this week. <clears throat> Hopefully um, I won't be too... Uh, too poor and out of practice from streaming and I'll actually be able to uh, fill his boots for you guys. Hopefully you won't mind. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, anytime. So, Mr. Skate, how about you give everyone a little bit of an introduction about who you are? So like we said in the previous weeks, Father Hound is having a child, a real one, not an in-game pet, like an actual baby. It's coming. To, it, the, he might already be born when this episode comes out. We have no idea. So, Scape is filling in for Michael this week and Possibly other weeks. We'll see. So maybe we'll get to see more of him. So tell us about yourself a little bit. Yeah, so uh, my name's Scape. Um, I do nothing but play RuneScape. Uh, I'm a very, very, very good friend of uh, Oxy and uh, Michael's here. Uh, I am the founder of TNL. Um, I wouldn't consider myself the owner because we're not really that kind of clan. Uh, we're a big group of friends. We're all, we're all mates. Yeah, you know, Oxy and Michael are both just as much mods as i am and that's it really other than that i'm um i'm a bit sweaty when it comes to skilling i love pvm and i'm a sucker for bingo <laughs> what uh what's your total level right now by chance it is 2218 so i'm i'm Damn. i'm trying for max i'm trying for max i will go i'll say trying i am gonna get max but it's hard <laughs> it is yeah i don't right. uh, i don't even want to think about maxing so again just Congratulations on that, because you recently hit 2.2k, right? Thank you. Yes, I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, I think 90% of it is mobile. Um, as, as you know, because uh, I spend a lot of time at work, and I don't get much time to actually play the PC. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you, some of those methods are pretty uh, pretty shocking on, on your phone. <laughs> I imagine some of them are a lot better, though. Like, you recently grinded out 99 Thieving, right? Was that at Ardy Nights? Yeah. Um, I actually really like Pyramid Plunder. Um, I'm really lucky with the uh, scepters, the Pharaoh scepters. I've had like five uh, when I got to 91 Thieving. And I thought that's what I would do all the way to 99. Um, mm -hmm. But I actually quite enjoyed uh, RD Knights, especially when I hit 95. So I think it's with the medium diary and 95 uh, Thieving, you can't fail. Uh, and in the higher total level worlds, there's always Knights Lord. So on your phone, it's easy. It's just tap, 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 tap. It's, yeah, it's good. I, yeah. Uh... I hated Arty Knights when I had to bring it. <laughs> I, I think it was about this time last year, I was trying to get uh, Dragon Slayer 2 requirements, and like I think, what's it, like 50 or 60 Thieving is one of them? Uh, Something like that. So my like, mid-50s ass was like in the Splash Worlds, failing like 80% of the time with like the Arty cloak on. I didn't have the HP cape, I didn't have a regen bracelet because I couldn't afford it. I had like an inventory full of lobsters and like a hatred of the thieving skill. Oh, that's when the game is good, man. The, the mid that mid game is the best. You, you never I you never lose that mid game. I know it's you do so when you bad. do it. The but... mid fifties is terrible. <laughs> you will miss it. I promise you will miss it. Oh no! Don't worry. I already do. I've got you know. You get up to the upper levels and you're like, yay, four hundred k mining <laughs> XP. This isn't even the worst part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got three days to get one level. Yay. <laughs> God, we love this game. <laughs> did you do all of those RD nights on PC then? No, I did them on mobile. I was at oh my, uh, my girlfriend at the time. I was at her house. We were going to um, going for like a Fourth of July celebration, and uh, I was like up late at night because they all go to bed relatively early. I don't. I was up till like two o'clock in the morning, tapping these RD nights with like Netflix on the bottom corner of my phone. Like spam tapping them. I had my phone vertical at one point, so I could just tap like this and watch. And... <laughs> that is a true gamer right there. That is dedication. <laughs> oh my god, it was terrible. I'm so glad that grind is over. Because Pyramid Plunder actually isn't too bad. Once you get to, I think, like 71, Pyramid Plunder becomes not the, the shittiest method in the world. Not yeah. that it's like really bad to begin with. It's just, you know, thieving. Yeah, it's it's slow and it's infuriating if uh, you keep failing those uh, those jars. I mean, I've quite frequently I've, I've found myself running out of time at the lower levels and oh god, yeah, yeah, not not time, not not. So I think seventy one's seventy one's good. Yeah, 
definitely not too bad. Uh, my thieving is still, I think, parked at 81 or 82. I don't know. But uh, speaking of levels, I myself recently hit 2K. Uh, mm-hmm. When was that? That was after the last episode, Lit- I think. Because I think literally... I would have mentioned it. Yeah, it was. Yes, it was. It was after. It was literally yeah, just it... about five days ago, I think. So, geez, yeah, I was going to say it was. It, it was right before our, uh, the event that we held this weekend. Mm, which I'm sure so, you're uh, going to touch, right? We absolutely will touch it, because this is a, a bit of a smooth segue into our, uh, into our topic for this week. For those of you uh, anticipating it, sorry, this is not an interview with Scape. Uh, we, we're talking about game content. We're talking about stuff. Stuff I'm so excited about. Um, we're talking about the wilderness. Again. Because we finally have the Wilderness blog. I feel like I've said it for weeks. The Wilderness blog is coming next week. We're having a modcast about the Wilderness blog next week. And finally, now we actually have it. And holy shit, there is a lot to cover. It is way overdue. And I am also quite eager to see where they go with this one. Because there's a lot of people talking, a lot of people shouting, and a lot of voices that have been unheard for a long time. So Mm -hmm. I really want to see uh, where they go with this. Because as far as I'm aware, I don't think there's going to be any major, major uh, new content additions. Yeah. I'm really keen to see where they go with it. Yeah, I am too. The opening of the blog is pretty much like break down the statistics, which actually give us numbers. So about 30,000 people responded to the survey. They give us a bunch of numbers about it. And then the first thing they talk about is... Uh, I guess, like, tricking and luring and skull tricking and all that within PvP. And they're implementing a ton of changes. Like, the skull tricking one, I think, what's it? They're, like, adding a setting so that it's, like, avoid attacking players in such a way that would get you skulled or something like that. I think that's yes. how they word it in the blog. Yeah, so basically the one of the big responses was, you know, make sure when you do go into the wilderness, you have your attack options hit, you know, stuff that. We do forget sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's when it becomes more infuriating when you do know that is what you should be doing that you forget like everybody does <laughs> many times. I think I have scored up accidentally and narrowly <laughs> escaped. <laughs> <laughs> and it, your heart pounds when you do it. Now, I love PvP and I don't risk too much when I go, so I don't particularly fume that much at it, but I can see how if you're risking something, thinking it's protected mm-hmm. and you accidentally skull, that could be absolutely infuriating. I, I can see that. Yeah, I think for me, the biggest place that I probably would get skull tricked is the God Wars dungeon. Uh, just because it's, it's easy for players to kind of like disguise themselves as other NPCs or um, the mage arena. The mage arena people hide as like Sarah Doman wizards all the time. And That's skull so trick common. one another. We've had we've had yeah. clan mates get uh, get skull trick for like a, a lot of money, like all their runes and things like that. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but as like a PVMer in the wilderness, I would hate it. You know, I usually keep my attack options yeah. to either right click or just hidden if I'm in the wild. Yeah. But if I'm doing PVM and I have like a crossbow and anguish and a suffering, and I accidentally skull up, that's terrible. I'm not about to lose 20 plus mil in Zenite jewelry and all my recoil charges in the imbue. No, no thanks. So yeah, hard, hard pass on, on getting skull trick, but they also talk about like how to avoid luring. The blog says they want to make the following changes around like safe areas and banks and PVP worlds. And they want to make doors always open in PVP worlds. Do you know anything about the luring PVP world? Anything? Cause I have minimal, knowledge i do have a little bit of knowledge over it just because of all the youtube i watch um i know a big one uh for luring in pvp worlds was using the pharaoh scepter Mm -hmm. so what they would do is um they would get you to uh put on this pharaoh's outfit which uh part of it includes obviously the pharaoh scepter Mm -hmm. um promising you that you would keep it uh when you left click it i believe it teleports you straight away to jalzavra mm-hmm. or jaldra whatever the other teleport it teleports you somewhere anyway but wherever it teleports you to is not safe and at first there was no warning i still don't know uh if they've added a warning to the teleport i think they have now but it does teleport you to a, a pvp zone and you can be attacked and a lot of people were getting caught by that basically 
I, I think that's why they made I think they made a change weeks, months, year. I have no months. idea how long ago. If it you're was. about the tablets, I think. Is that what you're gonna say? Oh the tab no the tablets are a totally different thing, but they I think they updated it so you like the left click on the Pharaoh Scepter is equipped now. I yeah. think. Well that's better. That's definitely Which better. is definitely a fix. But the, the tablets are so stupid, dude. The tablets oh, I are got, <laughs> I got done by that. <laughs> when uh um, when was it the the lunar spellbook tablets came out? Uh I got done by the um uh, ice plateau. That's that's what got me. Uh, mm -hmm. because uh there was a day where there was hundreds of tablets uh, to, to teleport to the ice plateau mm -hmm. dropped in the duel arena. That's when it became like YouTube famous and um a lot of people obviously risk a lot of money or have a lot of items on them. Loads of people flex Tebow's in their inventory. Yeah. You've got 10 Tebow's in your inventory and then you left click to go to Ice Plateau. Ice Plateau is level 45, 46 wieldy. Yeah, I think, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's past the fence. I think it's in the 50s. So you're like... Yeah, yeah, you're up there. You, yeah. you get, you get, you're getting attacked and then a full team would log in. You've lost stuff. I had just finished the Inferno. Uh, sorry. Let me rephrase that. I just finished an attempt <laughs> at the Inferno. Um, I had my full gear, my, my Tiva, my Kodai, uh, all my armor, my Ancestral. I saw a big stack of these tablets on the floor, uh, clicked them. Uh, I didn't know what they were. I just thought, well, there's like a few hundred K here. There's like easily enough for some more parts for a run. Clicked one because I thought it was the uh, Asgarnia Ice Dungeon. I went straight up to the wildy and I lost my code. I lost my arm. Jesus, dude. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> that was that was that was my my uh, my fault. That hurt. <laughs> yeah. That so hurts that was to even that, hear about. Yeah, that's a low. Um, there's also a bankler, a really clever bankler in the uh, barbarian outpost. If you've seen that one, and I have not. Basically, no. the you know where the chest is in the bar outpost, mm -hmm. barbarian assault. That chest, the tile where you stand to bank, is the only safe part of that room. If you step away from there, um, you're, you're in PvP within that building still. Yikes. So a lot of people would trade you while you were stood next to it, because you'd see like, if you were already stood there in a safe world, it would get you to um, switch worlds to a PvP world. You would say, see that you were in the bank and you're in the safe zone. You'd think, great, right, I'm safe. They would trade you and then run away. You would instantly hit that pink bar saying so and so wants to trade with you and then it would drag you into the pvp zone with items in your inventory obviously they'd promise you riches and uh, you'd leave with nothing so that's that's another uh, well-known law rich in knowledge i guess <laughs> that's so yeah. that's so shitty i'm glad they're doing something like to worry about obviously the worst part of luring is the people not the game mechanics but you know anything to make it a little bit more difficult for them is better uh, somebody did once try to lure me with an ice plateau teleport the day that they released. Um, I was doing gargoyles and I had like all my max mate like gear on and I had my set of guffins and all that. And this dude was yeah. like, Hey man, can you help my, uh, can you help my buddy out? It was something stupid, like the classic hundred K for a bond. Uh, and he's like, here, I'll give you this. You can teleport there. I said, really? How many people have you gotten today? He's like, Whoa, what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm not an idiot. I know where the ice plateau is. He's like, oh, dude, we've already made like 70 mil. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, that's probably reported. my 70 mil, right? <laughs> that was probably mine that he had. Oh, my God. I hope not. <laughs> that was probably that idiot before you that said, yeah. <laughs> Should have seen this other guy, man. He's in the duel arena and full of frail games. Lesson learned. So they've, they've done a lot of things to like combat malicious. Um, malicious activities in the wilderness but when we say malicious we mean like skull tricking luring things like that because you could argue that like all pking in pvp is malicious i guess to an extent if you're not signed up for it but i mean that's the risk of the wilderness the mm -hmm. combat and pj timer what are your thoughts on that i don't really know where they're going to go with that because they, I think the question was, do you think it's fair on a singular person in the world when it's been attacked by a clan in singles, right? Mm -hmm. So a clan can just continuous, continuously PJ somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, they could spec you and then somebody else could win a freeze you. Uh, if you've got no ranged weapon to hit them back with, you're at the mercy. They can just switch people in. They'll have infinite specs. You, you don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. So 
to be honest, if they increase that, I think it is fair. I think if they increase the timer, that would probably be quite fair because it is so unbalanced and one-sided on the clans. Like you, you're done. Like you're not escaping a clan if they've got hold of you like that. Yeah, even it's very rare. Even a duo. You know, I experienced that a little bit this past weekend, uh, mm -hmm. where you know you'd start fighting someone at the chaos altar in single combat. They would freeze you, run away. Their buddy would spec you, teleport out, yep. come back, spec you again after you've been frozen again, and then it's just one on. It's two on one at that point. I don't mind the PJ yep. timer. Uh, I don't love the idea of the entire wilderness becoming singles plus. This is spoken from the perspective of primarily a wilderness bosser and a PVMer. I, I yeah. don't like that it's singles plus. No. Uh, I think it would take some of the risk and reward that they're trying to balance because Vetion is such good money because the ring is a high price. Mm -hmm. The ring of the gods is a high price because you know you go there you do one to two kills max if you are lucky, and then you get a clan attack in you. Mm -hmm. you. You're dead. So there's not that many people grinding it and bringing them into the ground into the game, and it's not because of that. There isn't an abundance of rings, and I think that keeps the reward high. So I think you're right. If they made it everywhere singles plus, that would make just that would make bosses like that a lot safer. A lot more people would do it, which is great, but. It would also bring down the value of all the items. But so, but they're not the, affecting the multi combat. Change. They're from what they've said, multi combat's gonna remain untouched. Like Vedion is still gonna suck until they fix it. But a boss like Crazy Archaeologist or Chaos Fanatic or you know, Green Dragons, for example, like all those areas that are single combat and you can PJ on, uh you can't I, I don't think you can do that anymore. Another big one is like the magic axe hut. So, like, if you're in there mm. fighting something, trying to escape, somebody can come in and attack you. As a PVMer, I don't <laughs> like it. I think it sucks. As someone who's wanted to go out this weekend and actively hunt PVMers, it's going to be fun. It's really going to spice up the, the wilderness, like, PKing and all that, I think. Again, I'm not a primary PvPer. I've said it for weeks now that I am trash garbage at fighting other players. Um, but I think it would be, it would make places a little bit more interesting, you know, like PKing at archaeologist might be viable now, PKing or bot busting at green dragons might be viable now because it's all singles plus. So you just show up and you teleblock yeah. someone in like the classic green dragon bot apparel, then I think like as someone who loves hunting bots, that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean. Uh, a really, really common uh, method of escape in the Rev Caves was to box hobgoblins, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's a really effective method of like escape. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't box the hobgoblins, that suddenly becomes a hell of a lot harder. And I'm not necessarily against that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. I think maybe being a little bit specific and leaving some some places untouched might be a good idea. So. If you just blanket everywhere like that, you're going to stop people from going in, right? Yeah. I was just going to say, it, it is difficult to balance. That's, that's all. Yeah, and I mean, the blog itself is not for PVMers. It, it's a blog pretty much dedicated to, like, Wilderness PvP and Wilderness PKing. So, I think it serves Wilderness, um... I think it serves Wilderness PKing pretty well. But I also think it is going to hurt it a little bit. Because you're right, I think it is going to discourage a little bit more wilderness PVM and a little bit more wilderness bossing, you know? People are confident with crazy archaeologists because as long as you're in combat, you won't get hit. Same thing with fanatics, same thing with most monsters outside of the Slayer Cave or the big bosses. Yeah, I think maybe the benefit of the crazy archaeologist is it's such low wielding. Yeah, that there's easy ways that, to escape. Yeah, and a PK would still... That, well, then you would definitely have to teleport them and cast your snare or your, you know, whatever you're doing. Um, maybe in that case, because of that, and because it's such low wieldy, it would be a good idea to have singles plus there because there is risk, but there is also a quite high chance of still getting away. Mm -hmm. Putting singles plus in the magic axe hut sucks. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> 
that is you're not teleported out of there like yeah, <laughs> that's that's difficult there, there's no escape dude tb in 50 wilderness with the obelisk and the two levers being your only route of escape if you can avoid freezes and bolts and specs for two and a half minutes or five minutes depending on what <laughs> you were doing like getting tb'd at scorpia is a five minute death sentence you know so yeah um is it still i believe the tb is halved if you're praying mm-hmm. Magic, if you're praying magic, correct? it's two yeah. and a half minutes. But if you're praying anything else, yeah, it's, uh, even augury, it'll still be, <laughs> it'll still be five minutes. So, a five five minute TV is that is different. Five, five <laughs> minute TV is harsh. Pro tip: if you ever PK, if you yeah. ever PVMing at Scorpia and someone comes, in, just die. Just accept the fact that you're gonna <laughs> die. Turn your prayers off and just give yourself up. Nothing you're gonna gain at Scorpia, unless you're like an Iron Man going for one of the shields, is worth keeping. Uh, the, the pet obviously is very nice but like make sure your items are protected and give it up because if you leave the cave there's usually five or six people waiting out there for you who don't have to worry about scorpius poison and all the guardians like attacking you with their little range attacks so just accept the fact that you're gonna mm-hmm. die but there is also a pro tip you don't have to outrun the pks you just have to outrun your friends just think about that yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get lucky at uh, at KS Elemental, and KS Elemental will teleport you further away from everyone, so you can get yourself a gap. Oh, I love that dude. That is brilliant. You know, I'm an avid Chaos Elemental. Yeah. Killer. What's your What's your KC <laughs> at after this weekend? Uh, nine hundred and thirty nine. I am rank. I am rank two hundred and something. Jesus uh, I haven't God. checked. <laughs> I'm 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 getting there, but. I have died once to a clan, which was funnily enough this weekend <laughs> at Chaos Alley. I've been very lucky. Many times I've been teleported away, or the PK has been teleported and given me gap. <laughs> I can hear, I can hear the keyboards being mashed with insults, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant. My favorite at Chaos Elemental is when they're trying to attack you and their staves get unequipped. So they go to like ice barrage you, and they just like run up to you and like punch you in the mouth because they don't have their staff equipped. Oh, dude, it's, it's fantastic! It's glorious when that happens. It really, is. wilderness content is a lot of fun. So we keep talking about this weekend, like what we've been doing, what we've been up to. We have been up to a uh, wilderness only, like region locked bingo. It was like a three by three board. We encouraged PKing. We had bonus tiles, things like that. For a lot of the clan mates, it was an experience to get in and like do wilderness PVM. Like Michael, for example uh never did a lot of wildy pvm ever and over the course of this week he had went to multiple different bosses he has more vetty on kc than me now uh which again i only have five vetty on kc but i was still super impressed we got michael in the revenant caves for a little while like this is a guy who doesn't wow you like he doesn't enjoy the risk of the wilderness and he was still able to go out so that was awesome and then people like me who love wilderness pvm i ended up doing pking holy shit wilderness pking is terrible (laughs) holy shit it is terrible i think a lot of the changes they're making are gonna be fun and there's so much in this blog that we could go and like break down piece by piece you know like the loot keys like dead man mode i think that'll be that'll be interesting yeah, the loot keys will certainly be an interesting addition. Uh, because if you've never played Dead Man mode, when you kill someone, you get like a bank loot key, so you can see like the most valuable items in their bank. Yeah, there's so much happening in this blog right now. Of course, we're gonna link it in the description down below. We're not gonna like talk about it and then not give it to you guys. They've introduced new nerfs to go along with PvP. New nerfs and new buffs, new changes to items, where the never-ending saga of equipment rebalancing continues now we're getting on to the the final phase which is like the pvp related items the bulwark the black d hide yeah i've noticed the bulwark is actually it's actually going up and i don't understand why because the whole idea is that it's way too overpowered right so they are pollen to nerf it they are reducing the magic uh defense on it by quite a significant amount I mean, if you were a bulwark, you are praying magic. That's what that's what you are doing. You probably have augury or you know something like that um, activated. So your magic defense is already going to be high. Plus, then you have your prayers on top of that. It was too overpowered. I don't see why that would make the price of the bulwark go up. There must be something I missed. 
but uh, I actually made about two mil on it during uh, during our uh, weekend shenanigans. They've made a few different changes. They've like increased the attack speed of the Din's Bulwark. They've increased like the crush attack bonus, and they've now scaled the melee strength based on your defense level. It's the only item in the game that your your melee strength will be based on your defensive gear and your defensive levels. I tell you what that would be good for. Have you ever seen anybody Darok a black chins? That is quite a common thing. Now, Darok is a plate body, so the crush defense is quite low. If you've got a high crush attack and it's all based on your defensive level, which is going to be high with a bulwark, they're going to be low HP. <laughs> so, now, if you Darok in the world, you don't tend to do one HP because that's mm-hmm. just silly. Like, you could be poked with a Draven staff and mm-hmm. die. Uh, but a lot of them sit at like 10, 15 HP. Like, you can hit that. So maybe that's why. That's actually quite smart. That would be, that would be <laughs> spectacular. There's a bullet point here. It says, in full mm. best in slot defensive gear, providing an average defensive bonus of plus 498. This results in a max hit of 46 with the Din's bull. That, yeah. <laughs> the Din's bull. But yeah. I assume full defensive gear is like, Obviously, Justicier, probably an Amulet of Fury, Ring of Suffering imbued. Um, like, what other super defensive slots are there? Like, what do we have for gloves? Probably Barrow's gloves. What do we have for uh, Barrow's gloves? Boots? Uh, Guardian, Guardian boots. boots yeah. Guardian boots are very good. I mean, even Serp Helms. Full Torags, though. Full Torags is very, very, very tanky. I feel like you could hit that without Justicier. Mm-hmm. But there's also Pure's. A lot of pures go fighting there. I don't know the. I actually don't know the requirements to wield it in Spulwalk. There'll be a lot of low HP pures now. If they've increased the attack speed and you can hit forties with the Din's Bulwark, yeah, that could be quite a good anti weapon. Damn. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is so be interesting. So they've. It says here that the it's like a passive effect, and when it's not in defensive mm. mode, so like you have to be. Like, I don't know if there's, like, an offensive Din's Bulwark now. You, like, hold it over your head when you're, like, running around or something like that. I don't know. I assume they just mean the attack style and not, like, what it actually looks like. Um, yeah. But, yeah, now it is, it's on par speed-wise with, like, the Scythe of the Tour. So you could, oh, my God, yeah. shut up. You could take full defensive gear and a Din's Bulwark, and you can still do a Scythe walk at Verzik and T.O.B. <laughs> <laughs> Come that's on, gonna have dude. to be a theme right if you gonna... got full defensive gear you can scythe walk verzik with a din's bulwark after this update <laughs> it it sounds like it's me me for pvm but i think the yeah the applications for pvp are going to be useful it's still a tank shield they're not nerfing it so it's worthless right now it just has a little bit more of a I guess, more specific use. And if it's your plus one now, because the price has gone up, you're going to be a higher value target for people to kill if they can kill you. So with the Din's Bulwark magic defense nerfed in combination with the ever-evolving Black Dehyde nerfs, uh, you're going to be much more prone to getting caught by freezes and TBs. I am in, speaking of Black Dehyde, I'm not in Black Dehyde right now, but... I am in full support of the Black D hide nerfs. I was super indifferent about it when it first came out. Over the weekend, I think my biggest streak was six. <laughs> six splashed ice barrages with augury turned on with the player not having an overhead turned on. Yep. Yeah, Black D hide is god tier for no reason. It is way too cheap. I would even be quite happy making um, God Dehyde. Like, because I believe they're still keeping the de- are they still keeping the bonuses? Yep, for God all Dehyde? the staff yeah, are staying the same with God Dehyde. Black Dehyde, it's like what twelve k for a set. It's so cheap, and it is surprisingly defensive. It really is. Like you have like almost a hundred in defensive stats from like just wearing the Dehyde alone, like. In melee defense, that that is yeah. silly <laughs> for something like for, for range armor. That is silly, and it it really they they say that it like doesn't make sense within the combat triangle because it really doesn't. You know, they've talked about making changes, and they're like they're, they're buffing the proposed melee defense nerfs a little bit if that makes sense. So originally they're 
the melee mm-hmm. defense nerfs for like the the dehyde body was like 30 and 35 across the board now it's like the defensive bonuses are going to be 30 stab 38 slash and 45 crush which coincidentally might help you if you're a din's bulwark peak here now um but uh yeah they're still they're like the slash defense has gone up a little bit because again combat triangle melee should be strong against range right like that's how the order goes you know you double claw spec someone for 60 hp total on eight hit splats when black dehyde what the hell is that yeah um going back slightly uh to the din's bulwark i'm wondering when you spoke about the offensive and defensive modes i'm picturing like an ag slash kind of thing you know for the pokemon <laughs> The uh, yeah, the old sword and yeah. shield with the king shield you you transfer you transform it I like that idea it goes from being offensive to defensive when you switch it but yeah it's funny that they've increased the crush defense of Black yeah. Dehyde <laughs> that's definitely yeah uh, that's definitely not going yeah, to uh, <laughs> never would have guessed so I mean I guess I mean if it's viable some of the increases particularly to Black Dehyde are pretty intense for uh, melee from what they originally proposed but overall it's like a 22% nerf as opposed to what would have been a 27% nerf for like the black dehyde body. The set mm-hmm. overall, I'm not 100% sure because I can't calculate that math. But oh my god, black dehyde is terrible. It's terrible. It's a godsend if you're a PVMer, but oh my god, it is terrible. And I really felt the frustrations of the PvP community this weekend because. When you log in right next to someone and they're wearing black dehyde chaps and a monk robe top and you splash five ice barrages and this little Iron Man's running away calling you a trash PKer, <laughs> I can't imagine that being my life in this game for years. This, this one weekend, obviously I don't understand the full like gambit of what the PvP community wants fixed because I am not a PvPer, but just deep well the PKing alone has made me just want to smash a desk with the way some of these items work in PvP. So my god. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, d- like I said, one weekend of PKing, black dehyde nerfs good, but that's you know, they like I said, they're also making changes to like Zerishian robes and making them worse offensively. They're making elemental stabs better with better tiers. So like battle stabs and mystic stabs are finally getting a magic mm. buff, which is why is has Good. that not always been a thing? Um so your mystic stabs are now gonna be yeah, worth so it. So I think the I think the mystic stuffs, correct me if I'm wrong, are about as strong melee wise as a rune scimitar. They are so. pretty strong. They have some high, they have some high strength mm-hmm. and attack bonuses, like for Crush. But they are surprisingly impressive. So the fact that they don't have a magic boost is a little bit silly because this this should do. Even if it's only minor, like mm-hmm. plus five of like attack bonus over a you know a, a battle stuff, that would make sense. So far, the proposed changes that they have is the magic attack of um of battle staves. So stabs is 10, battle stabs is 12, mystic stabs is 14. I guess your magic accuracy goes up a little bit, but so does your magic defense to go along with that. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like mystic stabs have always kind of been the meta if you're PvP, because if you're accidentally going to staff bash someone, you might as well have like a high, a high offensive bonus for it, but... Maybe we'll see a price reflection in more expensive Mystic staffs, like the Mystic Smoke Battle Staff. Like, that might be... Mystic Smoke... Is it Mystic Smoke Staff or Mystic Smoke Battle Staff? That doesn't make sense. That would be the second one. Yeah, I believe it would be Mystic Smoke Stuff. Yeah, it has to be. It can't be a Mystic Smoke. It's Mystic Smoke Battle Staff. That's a tongue twister. Mystic this is smoke why we need a technical staff. producer full-time. <laughs> Look these things up for us. But... Damn it, that was my job. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from the nerfs, there are one, I guess, one or two, one and a half, I guess, two more big-ish changes that are worth talking about um, from this Wilderness blog. And those are 
both caves, actually. The Revenant Caves and the Wilderness Slayer Caves. You've read over the blog. What are your thoughts on the, the Rev Cave changes? Do you spend any time in there at all? Have you ever been like doing anything in Rev Caves? Only for bingo. Um, I am not opposed to the Rev Caves. I just don't really have much reason to go there. Because for me personally, there are better money makers and I'm focused mm-hmm. on skilling. So for right now, I'm putting a lot on hold. My Zora grind is on a hold, you know, for the mutagen, my wildy bossing, all on hold. So me personally, I don't spend a lot of time there. But the times that I have, I actually quite like what they've done with it so far already. I think it's a lot of escapes. I think it's a lot of opportunity to freeze and to uh, kill people anyway. Um, I like where they're situated, uh, each monster. My favorite is where the Dark Beast is. Because that's a really, really, really good place to camp and mm-hmm. teleport if you need. But it's also, on the flip side, a really good place for PvPers and PKs to log in underneath mm-hmm. because they know where you're going to be stood. So that's risk and reward. That's a good balance. Like I like that. Um, so for me, I don't really think they need to be doing a great deal of changes to the uh, the Rev Caves. I don't know. Some of the Rev Cave like changes I like. A big one is increasing the number of revenants and reducing the spawn timer. Because I'm pretty much also only in the rev caves for bingo events and things like that. I don't go to the revenant caves as a money maker. And since I'm a terrible PK, mm-hmm. I don't often go to the revenant caves to try to kill other players. The the uh, the more spawns is going to be good when you are trying to hunt them because it like can keep you in a smaller area. Because right now, if you want to kill revenants. It's pretty much like a cross-country marathon to get from one to the other. And, you know, for me, I like to go, like, Dark Beast and South. So you have Dark Beast, Demon, Orc, and then, like, Pyre Fiends and Hobgoblins and, like, little meaningless ones you'll kill on the way uh, that have a high enough drop rate to, like, warrant a statuette or something like that if you're trying to get a drop for an event. Um, But not high enough that you can't insta-tell you out if someone freezes you or TPs you. Uh, a big change that I'm a little spooked about is the entrance in level 26 wilderness by the hobgoblins and the obelisk. It's one way now, so you can get in, but you can't get out. Right. That's spooky. that's interesting. I mean that. Yeah, I mean that would make it very easy to camp on the inside because you're you then now because a big deal with the entrance and the caves is people just go in and out, mm-hmm. in and out, in and out, in and out, right until they've lost you. Mm-hmm. that's like a common strat so that yeah that would put a lot of people off there which i guess may lock them down mm-hmm. to the areas of entry which means those places would be more populated but why wouldn't they just close it off if that's what they were trying to achieve there has to be something i think it's because it's close to a teleport like if you're going to pk or if you're going to uh like, I know if I'm going to, like, PK at the Revenant Caves, for example, it's much better for me to take a house teleport than it is to take a Revenant Cave teleport uh, and, like, not just, like, totally waste that inventory space. Um, although I suppose, depending on what you take, it might be beneficial to use a Rev Cave teleport because I forgot how equipping items works over the weekend, and uh, I tried to PK one of our friends in the clan at Vedion. And I froze him, and I DD'd him, and I spam clicked my claws and couldn't equip them because my inventory was full. So maybe depending on what weapons you're taking, <laughs> uh, if you're gonna go Din's Bulwark PKing and you need that you know second slot open for the two-handed weapon, Rev Cave teleport might be good. I'm not there super often. I'm never bothered by being scald. Crossbow is my plus one. Run around in the Rev Caves. I I don't care about being scald. I think. Getting the drops noted with the Amulet of Avarice is going to be awesome, which I think has always been a mechanic. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the drop table buff is... Yes, because the Rev Caves still aren't bad money. They really aren't, but they're Mm. not very populated anymore. So I think you're right. If they increase the number of Revs in there, because right now Rev Caves are a hop fest, right? Like you said, like if you're camping the south side, if you're camping the Dark Beasts, you are hopping frequently. Or you're bringing a lot of stamina. <laughs> so that would keep a lot of people in like a smaller area, maybe even one or two worlds even. So that would make it a lot easier to find 
PBM is. So that, again, is a balance of risk and reward because you're up in the drop table to balance your chances of being, you know, PK'd there. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it is good, actually. Uh, that is quite a smart way of handling it. Do we think, just for speculation, that we'll start to see more issues that we saw pre-Rev Caves rework, where it's clans locking down worlds, you know, people protecting like gold farmers all the live long day. If you walk in without a certain item or if you're not in the CC, you immediately get killed. Like, do we think we're going to see a lot of that still because they're increasing the spawns and the respawn rates and they're upping the drop tables and, you know, they've made escape more difficult. So like, how do we think, do we think that's mm. going to happen or no? No, I don't. I think the biggest reason for that is multi. Multi was a bane because a lot of these PKs that, protected uh gold farmers and pvmers weren't particularly very good one-on-one P- pks they weren't particularly high geared you know you could be in again full black dehyde and have five or six ags's right that you don't have to know how to use an ags to use one you click the spec bar you click the person and five of you are attacking one person they're dead you can't do mm-hmm. that you can't do that on singles plus so I think that really has canned it a lot. I don't think we're going to see that problem again. I think we definitely might see a resurgence of people going out there, especially if you're up in the drop table. Because the drop table already is amazing. It really is. It's really good for mid-level uh, money-making. And if anybody has done Wildy Slayer mid-level, instead of you know doing the usual uh, Cheldar and you know Konar grinds, it is... Yeah. Vanica and Kaldar. Yeah. Talk about the it, two worst mid fifties blues grinds. Mm-hmm. If you switch to Crystallia and do some uh Wildy Boss in mid level, uh you will be surprised how fun it is and how much money you will make in comparison. So people out there doing slayer tasks would be awesome to see. Yeah. I would be it'd be nice to see more people out there because you're right, honestly I think for me, second only to like Venonatus, the Rev Caves make me the most money in the wilderness. Yeah. You know, some bosses like Chaos Elemental, I lose money because I take divine range <laughs> potions and summer pies and things like that. And the crossbow is rightfully essential against wilderness bosses, but it's a cost per charge, a lot like a blowpipe. Um, yep. And there's a big inherent risk with it because every time you go out, you're risking at least a thousand ether with a crossbow or a chain mace. Uh, speaking of the different weapons, they're changing. Uh, what certain monsters are weak to. So it's not just going to be like camp your toxic blowpipe and run around. Now they're talking about like getting all of your wilderness weapons with different combat styles out as well as adding new mechanics. Revenant Caves are going to be a lot of fun, but you did mention Wilderness Slayer, which I also love. I love Crystallia Slayer. It's so fun and takes you places in the wilderness you normally never would have gone. Uh, yeah. I'm slowly advancing my White Knight rank from Black Knight task in the wilderness, uh, <laughs> just north of Venonatus with a cannon. That's great. But the uh, the Slayer Caves are also getting a rework. Holy shit, they're cool. I haven't seen this rework. So All right. you will have let to me, get up to speed on that one. Let me break it down for you guys. This rework is they're like removing some of the environmental elements like stalag. I think it's stalag might is the word we're on the ground uh, Mm -hmm. that block the dwarf cannons, adding a new slayer only area. You know, a lot of places have slayer only areas, but this slayer only area is going to have jellies, necreals, uh, dust devils and abyssal demons with enough of them to be able to barrage in multi combat. (laughs) That is. So cool. But it's Slayer only, right? Slayer only. You have to be on task in order to kill the monsters up there. Wow. Yeah. But I I assume you don't have to be on task to get up there, which is horrifying. Yeah, so if you're a peak, you could make some big big money (laughs) PKing those. Yeah, surely that's just more skull tricking. Inventory inventory (laughs) of Necreal loot? As a PKer oh in multi combat, shut up, dude. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> they are gonna not to have for to the PVM, either... but yeah, they're gonna have to either give a, a buff drop table, which most will the monsters do anyway. Mm-hmm. Like hellhounds have massive increases on hard clues, especially if you're wearing a um, Ringo Wealth eye. 
mm-hmm. and then I think the black demons and dragons all have a higher chance of like different loot on a higher drop table. Mm-hmm. So they would have to do that for necrols. Necrols are all always always good money anyway. So to then extend that drop table and give better loot and buff it. Yeah, that's that's going to be interesting, dude. I, I, I I'm I'm going to see some um, interesting people there. I think because I'm definitely going to give that a try. <laughs> they're they're also adding like the blighted drop table. So you know all the items you can get from like LMS, like blighted super restores, yes. blighted vengeance sacks, and all that. I think those are now going to be drops from Will the Slayer monsters. And there's just oh my god, there's so much cool stuff coming to this cave. Like, a big one is the random superior wilderness monster. So, all the tasks that you don't want to do because they don't have a superior variant. Demons, dragons, Anku, ice giants. There's now this random superior monster that will spawn when you're doing a Crystallia task. I think these are all going to be integrity changes. I don't think any of these are being pulled. So, I'm excited to see this stuff. Yeah, I'd like to see what a uh, superior black dragon looks like, because that's going to be a thing to fear. <laughs> oh my god. Even if it's just anything in the wilderness, like what monster could probably be spooky as a superior? Like, I feel like... Anku. Anku. A superior, <laughs> a superior Anku? Anku? Oh my god, that'd be yeah. disgusting, dude. All those <laughs> flesh bag of bones walking around. Yeah, I can imagine it to be like the Necroarch. Yeah, I was just—I hope it wouldn't be just like a reskinned model of like the um, abhorrent specter, but mm, just yeah, because I think the giant abhorrent the abhorrent specter is the one in the catacomb. Is that right? Yeah, it's the it's the specter, um, the superior monster where it's like big and angry and all that. I mean, they reuse yeah. models for a lot of things. Like if you look at the parasites in Nightmare, it's just Vespula with Nightmare's face on it. Yeah. So yeah, people is. reuse they reuse graphical assets, but I'm hoping for the wilderness superior. It's it's unique. It's a unique creature. It looks terrifying. They gave us a work in progress of the revenant boss that we didn't cover. The wilderness change is really exciting. I'm I'm stoked for pretty much everything. I'm worried about things like singles plus everywhere. That's not multi combat. Don't love that as a PVMer, but. I get it. This is not a blog for PVM. This is a blog for PvP. Um, I think overall, as a whole, it's a good PvP update. I've seen some people yeah. who are actively PvPers not thrilled with it, but mm-hmm. as someone who has only just started to dip their toes into player versus player, this is looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Any uh, any final thoughts for us before we head off to the break? Nope, I think we should go ahead to the break. I think that's a good idea. All Honestly, right, we have not stuff for us this week. Break, uh, break sounds good. <laughs> I, I'm going to hate to break it to you. I'm going I'm to break your little heart, but uh, we'll be back after the break. Please enjoy this recycled commercial because I have a very busy week ahead of me. So, all right. See you guys in a bit. Bye. <laughs> So, you're out of work, and you're looking for a career that'll bring purpose, meaning, and value to your life. Well, look no further. We have the opportunity for you. Here at the Grand Exchange, the customer comes first. One of our regulars always shows up wearing what I assume is like thousand-year-old armor. Andy has one of those abyssal demons following him around, so I'm pretty certain he just owns this place. Here at the Grand Exchange, you'll find working conditions that are second to none, with employee comfort being one of our highest priorities. Who thought it was a good idea to give our uniforms long sleeves? It's the middle of July, there's no roof on this place, I'm sweating my balls off out here. Here at the Grand Exchange, we strive to make each and every day worthwhile for our valued staff. Kids these days have no respect. I've been working here for 54 years, and I've never once heard a thank you from any one of these adventurers. Here at the Grand Exchange, we pride ourselves on our calm and comfortable working environment. I'm sorry, what was the question? I couldn't hear you. Just two people screaming. They shout the same things all day long. It's like they're robots or something. There's nobody going to do anything about this. Here at the Grand Exchange, employee health and well-being are among our top priorities. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, she wanted all of it. She wanted all 600 million gold pieces. 
Do you know how much that weighs? I can't, I can't feel my legs. So come on down to the Grand Exchange and submit your application to become one of Gilinor's happiest and healthiest employees. We look forward to serving you while you serve Gilinor, here at the Grand Exchange. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that commercial, because I know I sure did. See, Michael, I even said the bit when you're not here. That's how committed I am to that stupid little scripted exchange. That's a true friend, right? Though. Honestly. <laughs> honestly. The, the things we do for content creation. I don't know. Escape, do you know what time it is on the podcast? I believe I do. I believe it's fun question time. You are correct. See, that's a, that, that's a man... That's a man who knows XP waste right there. I am an avid watcher. I may have seen one or two. <laughs> Me too. Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes Possibly. I, like I've said, sometimes I edit them and just don't touch them. I like send them off to Michael to do like the final upload to like the Spotify and Apple Music and just like won't listen to them from there. <laughs> but fun enough. Fun enough? Funnily enough? Interestingly enough? I don't know. It, it makes it sound really suspicious. It's not. Es One of those. S escape, you thought of the fun question this week. We, we sat I for did. about an hour and a half uh, waiting to think of a fun question. And Scape has, has thought of one. Yeah, so... My idea was... What RuneScape boss would you like to see? As a playable character in Mario Kart, what would the power be? You know, the last ditch effort on the uh, your last on the last round. What power would you get, and what RuneScape boss would you use? Oh my god, yeah, that's that's definitely a good one. So I think you mean like by last ditch effort, like you're you're in like seventh or eighth place. You like go through a box, and like Baby Mario, for example, gets like the chain Champa that like runs you forward, and you know like. Yep. stuff like that absolutely I guess. yeah yeah god it's been so long since i played a mario kart game uh it is a difficult question yeah but there are also a lot of variety of bosses that we have all with unique abilities that all could fit quite well so i'll hit you with my idea real quick absolutely please do so my idea was vorka mm -hmm. right you get maybe a little blue uh vorky kind of like themed car you know to go with him Vorkath has a fantastic ability, and it's rapid fire. <laughs> rapid fire fireballs. <clears throat> they just spit at your feet constantly. Anybody that's died to Vorkath knows this. And it is the bane of any PVM I wanting to learn it, right? Uh -huh. Your last ditch effort, your seventh, eighth place, whatever place you're in, you're on that mushroom road. You're losing. There's three or four people just ahead of you to qualify. <laughs> Rapid fire comes out. You wipe all of them off. All, all done. Gone. Boom, 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 boom. Last place. <laughs> Dude, that'd be so. Now that is a. <laughs> that'd be so toxic. You pair that. If you pair that yeah. with like a mushroom, like a speed boost thing, that would be oh, so Lord. toxic. Just to like stun them all for a second with the rapid fire, and then you know, get like way ahead of them. Yeah. Oh my god. You could just carpet bomb the entire. <laughs> Straight. That's that. That's the meta. <laughs> it would be get rough. last place on purpose and then just rapid fire everyone <laughs> in front of you. Oh my god, that'd be terrible. 100%. I think I, I have I have two. I have two in my head right now. The first is because um, we were talking about the wilderness crazy archaeologist. Uh, I yeah. think uh, like the taste of knowledge special attack would be fun. Where if you mm -hmm. get close to other cars, you could like taste of knowledge and like throw out explosives forward that would like. You know, like, wah, the cars, like, fly up in the air. Um, what would that car be? That car would probably be, like, an old-style Jeep that they use in Indiana Jones to, like, drive around or something like that. And the crazy archaeologist yeah, could stay a, almost in his exact on the side. Room. Yeah, exactly. A little, like, the, the shovels and the pickaxes and things. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, and then just a really spooky one. I think uh, Verzik as a driver... And her power up would be she pops into like her P3 form and just like scuttles really quickly forward. 
card oh, to like oh, get no. ahead of other oh, no. cars, <laughs> and then just like pops back into a car and like drives forward with that. That would be so terrifying. You just like yeah. That is the stuff of nightmares. That is nightmare fuel. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Oh, Thank dude, the you for that image. You just teleport <laughs> forward. That'd be so cool. Oh god. I mean, the nightmare has so many like mechanics that it could do. Like it could spawn husks mm-hmm. that like s- slow down like those that are in front of you. Like drag at the car maybe, and they have like they're just slowed. Like they're like driving through tar. That could be interesting. But <laughs> the hand special attack where they they come up and like grab you for a second from nightmare jad would be a very interesting uh character to have there you could have him in like maybe a uh a cart that looks like i don't know one of the rangers like so it's like a little bit different but jad could fire ranger mage hits to which other carts would <laughs> <laughs> you get you get a few seconds. It's like something coming behind you. you better pray correctly. You're getting yeah. like bombed. Oh, dude! I hope you got game sounds off. A fun one for Jad. Uh, make it like an area of effect where he has like four healers just like rotating around his car really quickly, like the bananas. Uh, not, kind of the turtles, like the turtles. Yeah, kind of like yeah. the turtle shells, and they deflect shit that comes at him. Like each one has one life, yeah. and you deflect like shells, bananas, things like that, and then the healers like fall mm-hmm. away every time. God, okay, that would be really fun. This has been a super fun, fun question because now I'm just I'm there's so much potential for it. What about a boss like Hydra? You could use every that has, boss, like a ton of phases. What would you even do for Hydra? Hydra is a difficult one because Hydra. The main thing about Hydra is right that it loses a head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. It loses a head and goes into a different phase. So maybe it cycles through all, towards phases, mm-hmm. and maybe your cart changes to whichever cycle you're in, and whichever cycle you're in. So for the first cycle, you have poison mm-hmm. and acid phase. So maybe you could fire acid like three times mm-hmm. at the cart in front, and that would like slow the cart down, and then it would transition into the blue lightning phase. And then you have three lightning hits. That would make all the other carts smaller mm-hmm. that you hit. Way OP. Three hits with each phase is twelve. <laughs> the fire phase, you just throw a fire in front of you, a big carpet, like everybody's on fire, you're burning, and then all of a sudden you're jadded. Yeah, that would be way too OP. You couldn't do it. <laughs> You'd probably have to limit it have to, to like three pick up limit phase. it to like one, like one poison splat, one yeah. like lightning bolt for people in front of you. Uh, what would you do for flame phase? I've only ever seen people like fire skip. I'm like, how the hell do you fire skip in Mario Kart? You just don't. I don't know. Yeah, you can't unfortunately go one tile diagonal, can you? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't think you would skip. I think you're getting flamed, right? The whole idea is that it's an end game special attack. You're not blocking mm-hmm. it. You're getting flamed. Mm-hmm. Maybe if you just fire flames in like one singular direction, so like you could move out of mm-hmm. the way, so it's not too overpowered, and just do that once. That, that You could literally do this with any boss. There's no boss in RuneScape that doesn't have a Mario Kart transferable skill. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, when you word it like that, I, my, my dumb ass is almost like giant mole, easy. Giant mole, you're at the very, I, I thought, oh, there's nothing about the mole that could be unique. You get a special attack that just lets you burrow underground and like pop up in front of people, that would be... First place. <laughs> that would be so toxic. Giant mole is the meta for Mario Kart. So horrible. <laughs> that, that right there, that, that right there is a video oh title. My god. <laughs> <laughs> giant mole is the meta to mario kart yeah this is what we should have been talking about the whole time the wilderness blog is nothing compared to this this is content right here exactly come on capcom or whoever makes mario capcom. kart I'm nintendo <laughs> <laughs> I play RuneScape, dude. There are no other games. Exactly. What's another game? <laughs> this is all hypothetical, right? This is all just hypothetical. Although it would be, it would be pretty <laughs> awesome. It, it, admittedly horrible oh, to yeah. see, like... God. Who's a boss I can't stand? Calfight Queens? Barrow's Cal Calfight Cal. Queens and nasty ass in, in Mario Kart? I think you win with Berserk, though. That would be... <laughs> That's not Behold my true nature! Cart. Uh, no, I don't want to see that. 
Jagex, I know you I know you really, really want to put this in the game, but please don't. Please, please do. Don't. <laughs> We're fifty fifty split here, send it to the polls. Please do, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that that's a really good place to to put a cap on that very fun fun question. Thank you for thinking of that. Look at that. The the guest stand in uh, Michael 2.0 pulling mm. the weight and the on the fun question. I love it. <laughs> well, I have my time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh just like we said earlier, any final thoughts about anything we've talked about today before before we wrap up? I think I'm good. It's been super good fun. Thank you for having me. Hopefully I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't do my full day in. He was quite proud of me today, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure he'll give me feedback when he sees this episode. It's like, Escape, you made me look bad. <laughs> People are going to come back and be like, yeah, can we get Oxy Escape from now on? <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I'm not sure about a new Michael, guys. I like the old one. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what will happen in the comments. We'll see. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, Michael, are you okay? You sounded different the whole time, man. What was that accent? Why did you sound like Torvesta this week? <laughs> <laughs> Budget Torvesta, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, as always, time for the social media plug spiel. God, I hate doing this, but follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Still don't have a Facebook. Still not going to make one um xp waste code on uh <clears throat> beanies customs from instagram get your 10 percent off your beanie it is almost july uh and some parts of the united states are almost as hot as the sahara desert so not sure what you would do with a beanie but if you if you want one for like style purposes now's the time to get it code xp waste for 10 percent off um subscribe on youtube review on apple music Give us a like or a share, whatever you do, on Spotify. And most importantly, tell your friends. We would really, really appreciate just the constant whatever. Thank you to everyone who has listened and joined the Discord and done all the social media pluggy stuff. We really do appreciate it. We've had actually a ton of new people join Discord recently from the podcast. We had someone join just a few days ago who's like, yeah, I've been outer runescape for a while and the podcast got me back into it and with the new clan system update that we actually failed to talk about this week um they can you like broadcast when you get achievements so uh it's been really awesome to see fans of the podcast come in join the discord join the clan and then you can see their achievements like pop up like a bunch of quests levels pet notifications things like that so we really appreciate all you guys listening and watching across any platform so yeah you guys are awesome and we will see you next week bye everyone <laughs>